Dr. Richard Matto. Welcome to episode 15, season two of the Dental Practice Fixers podcast. Uh, we've got a great question from a listener today. Without giving away too much of the question, I'm just going to say that this is something that we've encountered in a huge percentage of the dental practices that we work with over the years. Um, when Dave and I visit a practice or when our coaches do, it's something that many people don't realize is an issue or they realize it's an issue but don't know how to tackle it. I'll just say enough said there. This is something you absolutely need to listen to and we know that it will help your practice. So again, I'm Dr. Richard Maddow. I'm here with my partner, friend, co-host. I'll leave it up to you now to introduce yourself. Dr. Dave. Dr. David Matter, how are you all doing? Thanks so much for being a part of the Dental Practice Fixers. We really appreciate that you're here joining us, watching or listening. Whatever you're doing, we appreciate you. All right, let's go, let's go and do the question. I'm just read the question, Richard. Please. we got to get in. It's a great it's a topic. short one, but a good one. It's something that we encounter all the time, even in our coaching, coaching, going into offices, seeing what they're doing. The question is, I don't think my soft tissue management program is as good as it could be. Any suggestions to boosting it? And it comes, thanks, he says thanks, and it nice. comes from Dr. Silverton in Michigan. Not sure wow. where in Michigan, but somewhere in Michigan. Dr. Silverton or Dr. Silverton? Um, it says Dr. Silverton here, oh, but it might be man. Silverton. I'm really, I hope sure. it's Silverton. I want to call him Dr. Silverton. I, call him I have an old um, Silverton guitar from oh. the early 70s. Is it from Michigan? It's, it's, not, <laughs> it's, um, it's actually from New Jersey. It was made oh, in, in um, wow. Neptune, New Jersey by Dan Electro Guitars. Is that your so Jordan, Florida? Florida? Mm, same not coast. Really. Yeah. Anyway, who cares about that? Let's get to Dr. Silverton or Dr. Silverton's questions. Wants to boost the soft tissue management program. It's a great question, and then congratulations for realizing that your soft tissue management program is not as good as it could be, and, and realizing that maybe you should boost it. And I'd say, Richard, what percentage of the offices that we have dealt with over many, many years would you say had a really good, robust, if I can use that word, soft robust. tissue management program in place? Fewer, fewer than 20%. Absolutely. I'm Most do not. So well, let's say congratulations, Dr. Silverton, for realizing, because that's where it starts, right? Mm -hmm. For realizing that this is an issue and that he could be doing it better because many practice, you know, you know what's funny? We've heard this from Dennis, from coaching clients too, that they understand that they should have a good soft tissue management program, but nobody in their area has perio disease. Wow. Just in their area. I'd like to move to that area. Wow, that's incredible. I want to move to an area where nobody has any diseases at all. That'd be great. Let me know where that is. But isn't that where it all starts? Thinking that their popul their dental population does not really have But I mean, it starts with, with realizing that you need to be diagnosing more periods. Yeah, and, and the good news about this and this question is that, I mean, we don't have, somebody's not writing in saying, how can I do crowns in one day? Well, yeah, you can do crowns in one day, but you're going to spend, be spending $100,000 up front to do that. The good thing about this is you really don't need to be investing in any expensive equipment, any systems. There's... there's you just have to do things a little bit differently, diagnosing and treatment planning. That's all. And when you do that, you're going to see a tremendous difference in your practice, in your production, in your collections, in your revenue. Invest in a couple of perio probes. That's all you need. Okay, so I'm going to give a suggestion to him. Yeah, I'll just be very sure. brief. I think it starts with a team meeting, doctor, hygienist, assistant, front office team, to talk about why um, you feel like the soft tissue management program or the perio department is a little lacking. Present the statistics that whatever it is, you can find a million different stats on that. But let's just say 70% um, of adults right. in the U.S. have some form of peri disease right. and that you want to really become a place where this is diagnosed and treated. Because if you're not doing it, you're just letting your patients lapse into worse and worse peri disease. So let's start with the altruistic nature of the soft tissue management program. The U.S. population has periodontal disease and it's our job to find it, to diagnose it, and to treat it. It all starts there. And if you're not doing it, forget, forget, forget about the revenue for right now, more altruistic, and making sure you're doing the right thing, covering yourself, because if you're not diagnosing perio, you're setting, your up, you're setting yourself up for some serious malpractice suits. And it's, it's a disease that people are walking around with and coming in your office with. If you're ignoring it, and doing, especially doing other work on top of that, it is a disaster. It's a mess. And now these days, especially knowing that periodontal disease is linked to cardiovascular disease and, and other things, it's something that has to be dealt with. You, it's just not, it's not an option. You have to do it. You know, it's funny. Um, we know and we've heard and we know for a fact that one of the top categories of dental malpractice lawsuits is failure to diagnose periodontal disease. Mm -hmm. 
I just wonder when some lawyer, because you know these lawyers, right? They're pretty sharp. Uh, somebody dies of a heart attack, and then they're going to, the dentist will be sued wow. for not diagnosing perio disease, which they'll say, if this dentist had diagnosed perio disease, they could have said, well, it's linked to cardiovascular disease. You need to see your physician. It, it theoretically could happen, couldn't it? That would be crazy. I'll tell you what else is happening right now. I guarantee this is happening. Doctors watching us right now, they're watching us or listening to us, and they're saying to themselves, uh, I know all about that, I, but I bet you that they don't have a really good soft tissue management program. They might even think they do, but I bet they don't because most don't. I agree. Most yeah. don't. The term that we throw around from time to time is supervised neglect. And some people will challenge saying, well, the legal definition of that is not what you're about to talk about, but screw the legal definition. Let's just talk about kind of our maybe layman's, not layman's, but lay dentists, sounds weird, definition of supervised neglect. And that is you see a patient, they're a great patient. They're coming every six months. They've got, you know, maybe a little five millimeter pocket here, a little four millimeter pocket there, a little inflammation, and you're just giving them the regular cleaning. You bill for the exam and prothe, and you say, okay, well, let's just pay attention to floss in this area a little bit better, and you're not treating them as a perio patient. You're just, you're neglecting it. And you're in charge, and they're coming in, right. and you're kind of patting them on the back and saying yeah. everything's going to be fine. Meanwhile, they have active disease. It might not be a high level, but they have active disease, and we're just letting it slide. And God forbid they go to another dentist down the road. They move. They change dentists for some reason, and they go to a dentist who's more on top of things, and, and you, they've got periodontal disease. And you're, guess, guess who's going to be in trouble? You're going to be in tremendous trouble. So stop right now thinking that you're doing everything right because according to our stats going into offices over many decades, chances are you are not. Now, if you are, congratulations, but chances are you're not. So, okay, where's the start? You say the team meeting, um, educating the team. I'd say make sure the team is t totally understands what periodontal disease is, the prevalence um, how it's treated, what can happen if it's not treated. And again, on lay terms, they don't have to be. They don't have to like take a peri periodontist course. In <laughs> they don't have to become peri They don't have to become board certified periodontists. <laughs> <laughs> but on, in lay terms, let make sure the team understands exactly exactly what periodontal disease is. I was in a restaurant a couple weeks ago, and the waitress who was taking my order smiled, and you could just I could see clearly. That she had period. Oh, that's gross. Periodontal disease. She had not, period. She had, like period. She had elbow. She, she, had, she, had, she had knee. She had period. Yeah. But I'm thinking, does she go to some dentist who like pats her? Oh, um, she probably. Betty, know you're doing is. fine. Everything's good. A lot of people do though, and, and it's it's supervised neglect. We've got to stop. I bet her name wasn't Betty either. I just have a feeling. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then of course, then where do we go? Well, every patient, whether it's a new patient or a recall patient or recare, whatever term you want to use gets a full exam, and a full exam includes full periodontal probing, periodontal probing. sharding, pocket depths, bleeding points, necessary x-rays, and if somebody's, right, Freminus. Freminus. If you got to do it. If somebody's not in perfect periodontal condition, they are a perio patient, mm -hmm. and we treat them that way. And it may involve very simple treatment, maybe some um, limited periodontal therapy, maybe full-blown scaling and replaning, with the, with the idea that you may have to refer them to a paradox, whatever it is, treat the disease, even if it's on the smallest level. They are a patient with periodontal disease. And the best news is that when you do it right, we're, not, we're never going to say here, do unnecessary treatment, um, treatment plan things that don't need to be done. We're never, you're never going to ever hear that from us because we went through phases in our dental practice where we actually hired coaches and consultants that tried to get us to do things like that. We, we, we're on to that. We would never ethically ask you to do something that's not necessary. But as you said, 70% of the American public, 70 to 80% I've heard of the American public has some form of periodontal disease. Don't let it go. Treat them, treat them right, and it will be more revenue for your practice, which is kind of a, a good thing as well. It's a great thing. But I think when you have the initial team meeting, again, if you remember from last podcast, episode 14, episode I believe 14. it was, there was an office manager who thought the fees were too high. and You know, that kind of stuff happens. So let's not start with the idea, hey, we're going to make more money by instituting a soft tissue management program or by having a better periodontal um, program or strategy in our practice. We're going to do this, and it's true. It's for the good of the patients and the good of the practice, and we want to do our best to um, be ethical and to have a high standard of care and not get sued and worry about things like that. And that's why we're instituting this great periotherapy program. You know what we found over the years is that when, when you're doing things 
solely for the money. And all when you examine a patient, you basically have dollar bills in your eyes, and that's all you're thinking, and that's all your team is thinking. You've got gold charts on the walls, and, and you know you got to you got to pre implant five more crowns. Gold charts in the treatment, <laughs> the treatment room. I mean, you know, look. Rich and I both understand that dentistry is a profession, but it's also a business. And we realize that you need income. You realize we need to make a good living. And that's all, that's fine. And we want to help you make more of it. Yeah, we're not opposed. Yeah. That's a good thing. But when you totally base your practice on money and income, then that's a problem. But when you're truly treating disease and helping patients, the money's going to come to you. It's going to, you're going to be fine. Do it the right way. Let's cover something that I know many people are thinking that actually is one of the um, reasons that people are a little hesitant like a, to institute like a hurdle, a hurdle. A hurdle. Good one, a hurdle. A and that block. is they're afraid that the patients are going to say, well, Doc, or Jane, or whoever, you know, my hygienist, uh, Farida, oh, it's Farida, she's my fantastic hygienist. Farida. 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 I, 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 <laughs> Farida. I was in here last time, and you didn't tell me I had that. What happened? And I think people are afraid of that question. Or if with a new patient, well, my last dentist never told me anything about this. What's going on here? And they kind of take the defensive, and, and they think the patients are accusing them of wanting to make more money. So how do we handle that? It's a great question. Yeah. We always start with being honest. I mean, it's, it's, when you're honest about something, you rarely can go wrong. Um, so there's nothing wrong with saying, well, Betty, or whatever your name is, Mrs. Jones, Mrs., you know, there's new research out there where we all, we're always learning, we're always taking new courses, and although you look pretty good at your last cleaning, we're realizing now we're seeing some gum inflammation, and we have now learned, and the, the evidence, the science is out there, that, that if you have gum disease, it can be linked to more th things going on in your body, such as heart disease and such as other things as well. So we want to make sure we treat this, catch it in an early stage, and take care of it very conservatively, very easily, which will hopefully take care of your problem. And that'll be it. If we let it go, if we, if we, if we ignore it, we let it go, then you could have problems not only in your mouth, infection, but it can, it can move on to other parts. I love of the word infection, by the way. Infection. Everybody knows what infection is. Nobody wants an infection. Nobody wants an infection. And that's a, a fantastic strategy for the patient that's already in your practice. And for a new patient, my favorite strategy is something like, well, I can't tell you what your last dentist mm -hmm. saw because I wasn't there. All I can do is tell you what we right. see today. And this is what we see today, and we really take a lot of time, as you can tell, right. and care to diagnose every issue that you may have so we can help you get better before it's too late. So, agree. Never blame, you never blame another dentist, even right. if the work coming in doesn't look good. Just, we, we've gone over that. Just never, it's, never, it's never a good thing to say something bad about a previous dentist. It's just not good. But, um, so I think we pretty much nailed this. It, but everybody in the office has to be on board. Kind of like last episode, I think we talked about Madge, the office manager, who was not on board with the fees and who thought that we were that the dentist was gouging all the patients. That's not a good thing. Gouging. And, and um, so, so every single person in the office, not only hi the hygiene department, but the assistants who are going to be coming in contact with us, people at the front desk, everybody needs to understand periodontal disease to a certain to a certain point, and and be on board and 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 feel that we're doing the right thing. If if you've got anybody on the team that feels this is just another profit center, we shouldn't be doing this. We're over treating. That's a big problem. And if you can't straighten that out, that person's not right for your practice. That's how I was on a plane one time. No, you never and, told me. And, that. Um, no. and they made the announcement: is if there's a doctor on board, please ring your bell. And like this guy, opposite row of mine, but I could see, rang his bell, and the flight attendant came over and said, "Sir, you know, can you help out?" And he said, "Well." I'm a board certified periodontist. Did that really happened. <laughs> yes. And did she? What did she? What did the, what did a flight attendant say to him? Next, exactly. <laughs> a board. So I mean, okay. First of all, does he even have to say he's a periodontist? And then a board certified. Oh well, you know what? This patient's having a heart attack. They're about to die. If it was just a regular periodontist, we weren't going to bring them up to help. But the fact that you're a board. So certified do you think he should have just said, "I'm a dentist"? Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm a dentist. I can yeah. help out. I'm trained in medical procedures. Exactly. I'm a dentist. I can help. A this. board certified periodontist. Like what is that? Exactly. Hey, before we get into the call yes. of the week, which yes. cleverly is linked to this question by Dr. Silverton, I, think it's be a good yeah. one, I think. Uh, just want to say something that Dave and I talk about from time to time. We call it lazy expenses. And that means money that you're paying out every month that you don't have to be. And sometimes, if you look through your charge card bill, you'll be amazed you're still paying for AOL or some kind of web service that you set up and, and don't use anymore. Or maybe you've just been paying for Netflix or some music service and you never use it anymore. Get rid of that lazy expense. One lazy expense that we've seen is people that are overpaying for their credit card processing. You don't know it because, you know, some bank called you two years ago and said, I can save you money in your credit card processing. And they showed that they could save you money. So you've got that 
and month after month, you're probably paying a lazy expense. Check out Fat Merchant. They do it differently. They do not charge an overage percentage. You're being paid by your credit card. I mean, you're being charged by your credit card processing company an overage percentage every month. Fat Merchant just charges you a really low monthly fee. You will save money and get rid of that lazy expense. So check them out. B-I-T dot L-Y slash fat. Mad and fat is spelled F A T T M A D. So it's B I T dot L Y slash F A T T M A D. That's a landing page that we've set up just for you. And the reason we want you to go to that page, that website landing page, whatever you want to call it, is because when you do that, they'll give you your equipment at no wow. charge. We use Fat Merchant for our credit card processing in the Matto Center, and you should use it too. Is that, would you say that lazy expense, and they, they kind of add something onto it, the, the typical credit card processing company, is that, is that similar to a hotel having a, a rate of like $139 a night, but then you get there and they charge you a resort fee? Is it kind of similar? I don't know, because that's a flat fee. It's flat. So it may be more like a tax, because that's a percentage. It's something that, you know, that doesn't have to be done, right? Yeah, the right. hotel, man, that's ridiculous. You go book online, the Hilton in, um, you know, Manhattan, mm -hmm. wow, it's expensive enough, it's $249 a night, wow, I'll book it. And you get there, and it's like three fifty a night by the time you check oh, out. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. crazy. Oh, the city tax, the state tax, the local tax, the amusement tax, the um, Javits Center tax they have in New York, all kinds <laughs> of stuff. If you are following us and we appreciate that and if you just feel like you're in your practice and you could be doing much better but you just don't know how to do it you know that you're kind of right here but you want to be here you want to be doing better in your practice we invite you to attend one of our Matto Masterclass days they're in Baltimore Maryland at the Matto Center for Dental Practice Success it's a full day or almost a full day it's a very limited number of docs that attend each one we keep it small intentionally and during this day we will show you pretty much from start to finish how we can help you build your practice grow your practice increase your income increase your revenue it's a great day we invite you to hang out with us me and Rich and our coaches for a full day to know to find out more. We've got some coming up right now. And by the way, they do they do fill up. We keep the. I think I already said. I think we better schedule another one. one. We really need soon, to schedule right? another one. So yeah. check out our schedule right now by going to masterclass.mado.com. We've got some coming up really soon. Check them out. We'd like to see you join us. Hang out with us. It'll be fun. Let's do our call of the week. Sounds good. Thank you for calling the office of Doctor. Hey, this is Tara. How may I help you? Hi, Tara. Yeah, I'm kind of new in the area, and um, I'm looking for a dentist. And every, I, everything I read about now, they're telling me to make sure you get somebody that has a, um, I, I think it's called a, a, soft, a soft tissue program. Uh, I, I want to find out if you all have that. Um, soft tissue, well, some type of soft tissue a management. program, um, oh. but we do do, you know, check the soft tissue and measure your gum, take gum measurements and everything. Okay, but you don't necessarily have a program in place or anything like that? No, I've never never heard of that. Okay. A soft tissue program. Soft tissue. I've soft never heard of that. Like a soft yeah, tissue usually, management, I think. Soft tissue management program I got written down here. No, I've never okay. heard of that. Um, okay. We do do uh, things called, like, if you have, like, gum disease or mm -hmm. bone loss, we do something called a uh, scaling and root planning and periodontal cleaning, which is basically under the gum line, and you may have to be numbed for it. Okay. But as far as an actual program, I've personally never heard of that. Okay. Um, it, it sounds like you may want to see, like, a periodontist. Ah, uh, I see. I see. Yeah, uh, it sounds like that's okay. something a periodontist would do. Right. Okay, well, thank you very much for your help. No problem. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Wow, interesting. <laughs> these things just keep writing themselves. I mean, you can't make these things well, up. Well, I mean, look, I'm going to defend her for a second. No, you cannot It was defend. a very odd question. I mean, yeah, you could okay, I'll give never you that. have anticipated that. that question in a team meeting. If someone's going to call and say, do you have a soft tissue management program? Or she was really thrown by the word program. Program. That, that threw her for a loop. Yeah, the pro because they, she said they, I think she said they do soft tissue management, but we don't really have a program. Right, I don't know what she thought program. that meant, like a TV program? I'm not sure what she meant. I don't know, but I'm not going to defend her as much because it was not a difficult question. If she 
if she's been trained to even understand, we, look, we talked about in the first segment of the show, get your team to understand, even on a fairly simple level, what gum disease is and, and what, why, how so many people have it and why we're treating it. She could have given a simple explanation. Oh, you called the right office. Yes, every patient that comes in here, we thoroughly check your gums um, and we check the gums for, for infection. And if we see anything, we can most likely treat you very easily here. That's all she had yeah, to say. I agree. I mean, she could have just said, yeah, we absolutely, you know, we don't call it that. She could, just kind of spitballing here. Yeah. She could say, well, we don't call it a soft tissue program, but we absolutely check gum disease. We check mm -hmm. for gum infection and we do treat it here. Let's, let's get you in for a full examination. I mean, that's, right. I mean, did she have to say that sometimes we numb you up and we clean right. under your gum? Wait, and absolutely Nobody not. knows what that no. is. Or nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that. That's right. But I loved how at the end she was ready to send you to a Perry O. Dantas. Dr. Perry O. Dantas. He's an Irish guy. Dr. Perry O. Oh, Dantas. Dantas. Oh, he's got a, yeah, he's got a, a, a I mean, that call within like a minute and 10 seconds, she's already referring you, not knowing a thing about you. Yeah, and I called, that's right, good point. I called to become a new patient. She's already, she's already diagnosing right, me. And referring. Referring me. So, I mean, bottom line is, she didn't really understand the question, but she could have easily said, well, why don't you come in, meet the dentist, we'll you yeah. know, do a full examination, and if you do have gum disease, chances are we, we, can, we treat can treat you here. here. We are yeah. very in tune to gum disease because we're, we, we keep up with, um, you know, we keep up with um, continuing education. We, we know how to treat it. We do it all the time. We see it. And, and we, we'd love you to come here as a patient. We still have a program. <laughs> if you want a program, you've got to see a Perry O. Okay. Well, Perry I hate o. to say it, but I think the fact that she made no effort at all to get you in, as a matter of fact, she tried to get you out. Get me out. She's going to have to get an F. I say she gets an F odontist. F odontist. She gets an F. Okay. Great Next stuff. Time. We will see you. That was season two, episode 15 yes. of the Dental Practice Fixers. I'm Dr. Richard Mano. Dr. David Mano. We'll see you next time. Thanks for being with us.